Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here, bringing you Mermaid Week on YouTube. I'm making up my own Mermaid Week holiday, and today I'm going to do an underwater wreath using my Copic markers. And Mermaid Week is just something I'm doing for fun because there's so many great mermaid stamps out there. So each day this week, I am putting out another mermaid card video. So here is the little mermaid from Reverse Confetti. I was in the middle of preparing for Mermaid Week and I saw this one come out and I went, I gotta go buy that one and add it to Mermaid Week because she's so cute. And with her, I was debating what color skin that I wanted to give her. I do have this thing that I do called the um, Human Rainbow. And I thought, what would happen if I made a little dark skinned mermaid? Because I think she would be really cute that way. And I just decided to go with some of my richer markers. When I go for darker skin, I often will start with lighter colors and just start to slowly build them up. So I'm using a kind of medium-ish shade because I don't want her to be too, too dark because there's going to be lots of other light things on the card. But I wanted to have enough punch to her skin that with the background that I'm planning for that wreath that she won't disappear. I wanted to have some really good, rich color. So my final layer is going to be this E13, which will give me just an overall dark color and blend everything out, but it's not super dark. And it's a little bit warmer because of that lighter flesh tone that was put down first underneath of it. And finish out her little arms. And she's cute already. I mean, I just really love her because she's adorable. Her hair, I thought, let me do some fun colored hair because she's a mermaid. So I'm using a purple and I'll use some teal to mix with it. Purple and teal are not colors you would normally mix together in any normal sense of Copic marker color blending. But I'll show you how I do this because it's certainly possible to mix basically any color. You don't have to stick with just what would be normal. So I'm going to put my blue-green color on the bottom and the purple on the top and then start to let the two of them blend. So I'm going to do a little bit of light kind of flicking toward her, um, her little part and let some of that blue-green go over top of the purple and mix some of it together. And you get a sort of interesting combination of the two colors there. And I'm not stressed too much about the blending because I'm going to do another step afterward but I'm just going to color in the rest of the blue-green. You hear my little kitty in the background. Everybody say hello to Punch. He loves it when you say hello to him in the comments too. And then I'm going back in with my purple and I'm going to pull that purple down, but I'm doing it with the lightest flicks I can possibly do just with the tip of the marker because that's going to also give some detail to her hair and it'll also make it look like that color is blending even though it's not completely blending, it's just a faux blending. And I can, you know, just add a couple little streaks here and there, wherever it seems like, like I want to add some detail. And you can do the same thing, of course, with your regular hair colors. It doesn't have to be your crazy purple and blue-green colors, but the same kinds of really light flicks make for some really pretty little hair. For her body, I decided I wanted to have a bit of a rainbow going on. And I'm keeping to rough rainbow order, but not exactly. I'm not worrying about it and stressing out about it too much. And the inside of that flower, I just wanted to have some general green, so I didn't even stick into those stick to those little tiny lines there. And that allows me to just color right over top of it with the yellow and have it be just a really soft blend of those two colors. Now when you're adding a dark color like this pink color, you'll need to blend over it with the lighter color and then sometimes you'll blend something more with a dark color. If you don't get a good blend with one combination, then try another one. Try going back to the color that you're blending into it with. I cut her out and set her aside and started working on the wreath. And the way that I stamped this wreath was to put a pencil circle for the outside, kind of roughly where I wanted it and then a smaller pencil circle inside and just started filling in stamps. I started with the largest ones and then moved to the smallest ones. And that helps you to be able to fill them in in the tinier spaces as they get smaller and smaller. There are a bunch that I masked, but I didn't mask them by cutting out a thousand little fish or little starfish or anything. I just laid a sticky note over top of something and made really quick and easy masking 
because it wasn't worth a lot of that detail. You're not going to look into it much on the card, but if it does bother you that some of the lines don't meet up, then just take a pen and fill them in. If you're going to fill it in before you do your Copic coloring, just make sure you use a Copic friendly pen. Generally, I use the Copic multi-liners. You see me there erasing my pencil lines because I realized I hadn't erased that really well. And that way you can color right over top of them and uh, the ink won't, won't move. But if you don't have a multi-liner, you can always do that after you finish your coloring with any black pen. And that way you'll still get the joy of that outline without having to have a separate pen in your possession. I'm using all the same colors that I used on the mermaid because that's going to tie the whole image together in the long run. And when you're coloring things with multiple images like this, I was trying to like first color all the fish and then go do all the seashells because your eye can start to kind of recognize certain shapes and it'll help to make sure you catch them all while you have that marker out. You're not constantly changing markers by going along the, the entire wreath all at once. So I, my eye is currently looking for all the small starfish to fill all of those in. You'll occasionally miss some, but at least it helps to control the coloring a little bit. Otherwise, you'll be constantly changing markers every two seconds and that sort of thing. So that can be a little bit of a pain in the drain when you're coloring something really complex like this. Now for the inside, I didn't necessarily need to, but I wanted to add some richer color because I realized this was gonna start looking really fussy and wasn't gonna feel much like a coherent wreath. It was just a little too dis disjointed for me. So in the center area of the whole wreath, I'm coloring with a dark blue-green color. And this is additional to the colors I had used earlier. And just filling in that center section, just kind of moving around, trying to decide how far out I want it to go. You could have just a very small amount of it and then switch to another color and I was trying to decide how wide that should be, how far should it stretch. And you could lay the image over it that you're going to use, and you'll see me uh, do that later on, and compare how strong it is compared to the, uh, the other image, like the, the mermaid that I'll be using. And when I look at this kind of a thing, it starts to become one shape when I have a big solid color behind it like this. So that really helped me in trying to figure out what this is going to look like. So then I went in with a lighter blue-green color and I just started adding a little bit of frilliness around the edges and I'm really just doing scribbles and dots, not getting carried away with it because nobody's going to really be looking at it. There's a lot of other things to interest somebody's eye as they're looking at this card. So it's just going to add a little softness so it doesn't look quite so harsh and I'm looking overall to make sure I kind of control the width of the wreath all the way around to make it approximately the same width. And when I got all done with it, I decided not to go back and fix something, but it is a little wider on the left side than it is on the right side, but I handled that by how I put it on the card, which you'll see in just a moment. But then I went in with the dark blue-green and I added a little frilliness on top of the light color just so I could soften that out because I had left a pretty harsh edge behind since I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. A lot of the things I do, I make up as I go along. So that's one of the details that I added as I started working with this. So now I've popped this panel onto a card base and here's my little mermaid. She's going to go onto the panel using some power tabs. These are really super sticky and they're dimensional but just barely dimensional. And I'm hanging her off the right-hand side, partially for two reasons. Hello, crows in the neighborhood. <laughs> you can hear the birds crowing madly behind me. But I wanted to leave room for the sentiment, and I also wanted to cover the fact that that right-hand side wasn't as wide as the left-hand side. And I love this little card. It's bright and cheery and simple yet complex, if that makes sense. So it's a really simple design, but it's got a lot of interesting both dimension and color and imagery and stuff. And it's just a whole lot of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this one and that you'll stay tuned for the rest of the videos this week. Yesterday's is in the upper left-hand corner. You can go watch that one. And all the others will be coming up as the week moves on. And if you wanna subscribe, 
you will get all the videos delivered to your inbox. You can also subscribe over to the, on the blog and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.